I agree to that as a sentiment as I present to you uh, some material on central bank independence as per my promise in the previous meeting. So without much wasting of time, I'm going to share my screen. So the module, the module is still central banking and monetary economics. And the course code is CPA 5213. And the, the topic is central bank independence. When we are looking at central bank independence, we are lo looking at the central bank's ability to control monetary policy instruments such as interest rates, open market operation, the results requirement ratio, selective credit control, moral suasion, and so on. So it's the ability of the central bank to be able to institute and implement a monetary policy by implementing a, a wide variety of monetary policy instruments. On the flip side, we can also view uh, central bank independence as a set of restrictions on the central government's influence on the management of monetary policy by monetary authorities of the central bank. The issue or the concept of central bank independence uh, tend, has tended to occur in countries with uh, high levels of inflation and in more democratic countries. More independent central banks are usually transparent. There is a correlation between central bank independence and transparency. The more independent a central bank is, the more transparent it is bound to be. So in other words, we are saying, uh, the independence of a central bank institution uh, is positively correlated with institutional quality or the quality of an institution. And uh, empirical studies have revealed that the greater independence of central banks is associated with lower levels of inflation, such as disparity. The question is, what exactly is the, this notion of central bank independence, which I've just defined? And why is it important? Sometimes this concept of central bank independence is called central bank autonomy. So when we are looking at central bank independence, it has to do with the freedom or the autonomy of the central bank from the dictates of government and the freedom of uh, monetary authorities or central bankers to determine monetary policy as opposed to politicians who, who in most cases constitute central government. There are some measures which are shown on the next slide, slide number four, of central bank independence. We have got scores uh, that um, were calculated for a number of countries in a certain stat, an empirical stat. For instance, New Zealand at a score of one, Spain at a score of 1.5, Italy at a score of 1.75. The corresponding inflation figures are 12.2, 12.4, 12.5, 2.4 Australia for an inflation rate of 9.5, 2 for Belgium for an inflation rate of 6%, 2 for France for an inflation rate of 8.2. Two for Norway for an inflation rate of 
8.3 for that period, 1973 to 1988. And then we go all the way to Switzerland, Germany with a score of four, with an inflation rate of 3.4, and Switzerland with a score of four, with an inflation rate of 3.1. So when you when we are looking at these figures, we can actually correlate these figures. We can plot the money scatter diagram. When you plot the money scatter diagram, we note that as a country's central bank becomes more independent, independent as its score increases from one to four, the average inflation rate decreases. That's what you discover when you put a line of best fit in the scatter diagram of these scores of central bank independence and the average inflation rate for the years 1973 to 1988. Now, the negative relationship is quite pronounced, producing a correlation coefficient of uh, minus 0 0.7976, which is almost 0 0.8 minus 0 0.8. The correlation is so strong that some believe that uh, central bank independence actually causes low inflation. But we know from statistics or econometrics that correlation alone, alone does not establish causation. But this strong negative correlation is a necessary first step in starting the causality between the two variables, which are central bank independence and the average inflation rate. But there are some scholars who have cast aspersions of doubt on these figures that the results were rigged in favor of these developed countries. That uh, the researchers simply assigned central banks with a good record on high inflation with a higher independence score. If this is true, it destroys the causality implications of the study. But uh, it bears noting that uh, many scholars have actually established that where the central bank is independent, uh, there is a higher likelihood for the inflation rate to be low. Now, there is political independence indicators where we look at who appoint the members of the bank's council or the, the members of the board of the central bank. And um, the extent of government representation in the council or board of the central bank and who has final authority on issues of monetary policy? Is it central government or the central bank itself? This has to do with the jurisdiction of the central bank. To pass judgment on the degree of central bank independence, some authors have come up with the composite indices or scores, which incorporate several of the above attributes as well as more attributes. The provisions of the central bank law have been a key uh, measure or criteria for ascertaining those attributes. Other factors are the turnover of uh, central bank governance, the rate at which central bank governance are changed. Uh, it's a factor which is also considered. So on this line, we have got the an index, and the people came up with the index or the name of the index. There is the Payton Park in 1988 index of political and financial independence, which is the index P like A18. The main variables are who has final authority, the presence of government of the government representative in the central bank board, the degree uh, to which the government appoints the board members or in which the government appoints the board members the number of the board members, the tenure of the board members, and the central bank governor's tenure. This is the political independence bit, uh, which has a bearing on the board. And then 
the as on the aspect of financial independence we look at the, the variable of financial and fiscal independence the authority which stipulates the checks and balances of the board members and the, the authority which determines the profit distribution and then oh, on the gmt index 1991 we've got economic independence or economic independence and political independence this takes into account the budget deficit monetary financing and the monetary policy instrument who is in charge of those and then the, on the political independence aspect the governors and board members appointment who appoint them and under what conditions the relationship between the central bank and government is the fundamental law and then there are other measures the more recent ones the seal bound and the Bound, 1992. Uh, the key variables are C1, governor, C2, monetary policy making process, is in charge of that. C3, monetary policy objectives. C4, limits upon the unguaranteed borrowings. C5, limits upon guaranteed borrowing, and so on. And then the D2, 1995 index of uh, central bank independence looks at the turnover rate of uh, central bank government so to give a more formal definition of central bank independence it refers to the freedom of monetary policy makers from direct political or governmental interference in the conduct of monetary policy. Because the policy in this case is monetary policy. The historical, legal, and de facto relationship between a country's government and its central bank is complex in many countries, involving many different aspects. Some of these relationships have to do with legacy issues like colonialism, especially in southern African countries and other parts of Africa. I happen to be in southern Africa, but I'm quite certain that it affects also other countries in Africa and even beyond Africa that have a colonial legacy, depending on which country had colonized a particular country. That has implications on central bank independence. Now, the historical, legal, and de facto relationship between the country's central government and the central bank is complex, involving many different aspects. These include, but are not limited to, the role of government in appointing and dismissing and or dismissing members of the central bank governing board, the voting power, if any, of the government on the board. Does the government have veto power on the decisions that are made by the central bank governing board. The degree to which the central bank is subject to budgetary control by the government, the extent to which the central bank must lend to the government, and whether there are clearly defined policy goals established in the central bank's chart. So these are some of the variables, but the list is not really exhaustive. So when we are looking at uh, the central bank, once more, we need to spell out the functions of the central bank so that we can understand this whole concept of uh, central bank independence. We know the central bank is responsible for setting interest rates and controlling money supply, which has to do with monetary policy, and also financial stability, which has to do with the, its role as the, the bank of government, and this the lender of last resort to the banking sector, especially the commercial banking sector. Uh, and also reserve management. The central bank uh, is the one which manages and supervises the country's foreign exchange and gold reserves as well as government bonds. In that regard, uh, the central bank manages government bonds uh, through open market operations, which I explained uh, in a previous lecture video. And then the central bank also supervises or regulates the banking industry as a whole or the financial sector as a whole. 
and also the central bank is in charge of the payments and interbank clearing systems in any given country. And it also issues notes and coins in many countries. And the other functions of the central bank, they include economic research. There is a research division at the Reserve Bank of Zimbabwe. And uh, the central bank also gathers statistics and supervises deposit guarantee scheme and advises advises government in financial policy to offer the advice to government when it comes to financial matters. The literature on central bank independence has defined the cumulative and complementary number of aspects. So there are different aspects of central bank independence, some of which I've already alluded to, but I will just briefly enumerate uh, quite a number of uh, uh, types or different types of central bank independence or dimensions around of central bank independence. We start with institutional independence. The independence of the central bank is enshrined in law and shields the central bank from political interference. This is what we call uh, DJ, the central bank independence, the one which is defined in terms of the law. In general terms, institutional independence means that politicians should refrain to seek to influence monetary policy decisions, while symmetrical central banks should also avoid influencing government politics. Because the central bank can also start to wield a lot of power when it comes to uh, things which go on in the realm of politics in their country. And then there is goal independence, ladies and gentlemen, which you need to take into account. The central bank has a right to set its own policy goals, whether these goals include inflation targeting, the control of money supply or the quantity of money in circulation, or maintaining a fixed exchange rate and so on. So the central bank has to have freedom in, in it has to have freedom in setting policies. It, it has to have freedom in setting policies. Just a minute, just a minute. Yeah, just a minute. Yes, uh, I was deliberating on, I was explaining the aspect of coal independence that the central bank has a right to set its own goals, whether they have to do with inflation targeting, the control of money supply, or the maintaining of a fixed exchange rate up to the central bank. And then there is functional and operational independence. The central bank has to 